No. No, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Stuart. Just. Uh, yeah. So, checking. welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday from Sight and Sound Technology. Uh, my name is Stuart Lawler. And my colleagues, Carl Breeley and Sharon Lyons are with us again, our, our by now almost regular Webinar Wednesday panel. We're delighted to be back to bring you another session. And today it's you setting the agenda with uh, an open tech surgery and your questions and answers. And to help us do that, we're delighted to be joined today by Mr. Will Burton, who's from our tech support team. And if you've been calling tech support, if you have had the pleasure of contacting our tech support, you have, I would say, pretty much certainly dealt with Will over the years. But Will's not only tech support, as we'll find out in a few minutes, he's also the man who is uh, responsible for creating a lot of the systems that you might uh, um, see uh, when you when you uh, when you are online through some of our sight and sound web services so we'll come back to will in a sec uh, before we do that though today we obviously want to have your interaction your questions and comments are key today because you're setting the tone of the session and you can do that on uh, windows by pressing by chatting by pressing uh, alt and h if you wish to chat or alt and y if you wish to raise your hand and on uh, on the mobile platform, you can activate the raise hand or chat buttons respectively. If you are sending chat messages, please send to all panelists and attendees so that everybody gets to see them. And Carl and Sharon will be keeping an eye on chats and raised hands and we'll be going over and back. We did also receive some emails from people with questions for Will. So we're gonna go through those as well in a couple of minutes and thanks everybody for sending those in. So Will, you're welcome to the session. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. All right. Can we can we find out a little bit about you, first of all, because I'm sure people chat to you on the phone and say, who is Will Burton? So f maybe to start, how long have you been with Sight and Sound? Oh, so a long time now, um, 2005, I think. So oh, goodness, 15 years. What was it like coming in? Because you must have seen a lot of change in the types of assistive technology that people are using now compared to when you started. Yeah, I mean, a lot has changed. A lot has stayed the same, really. We still use you know, Jaws and Zoom Text or the, you know, the bread and butter, I suppose. But then you know, you've got the new things like, you know, mobile phones and things like that, which weren't around when, um, or at least, you know, the smartphones and things. I mean, at the time when I started there, we were, you know, I, think we, I don't think we introduced the first Kane FB reader yet. Um, that, that came okay. probably a year or two after we started. And then, yeah, so there have been a lot of things that have changed in that way, yeah. Were you back then able to maybe do things like connect to people's computer or was it all over the phone trying to, you know, take people step by step, try this, try that? I mean, so at our first year, we didn't use connection to the computer. We'd just, you know, help over the phone. Um, yeah. Then as technology got better, we had you know, team viewer and things like that to, to connect in. So, yeah, that's um, definitely helped once we um, started uh, using that. So you're on the tech support team and it's a busy, busy role. I know that. Is there such a thing as a typical work day for you? Um, well, no, as you mentioned, I, I do a few of things other than tech support as well. So it's um, I'm not always on the you know, tech support you know, front line, so to speak. Um, but when I am, yeah, it is, you know, can be a typical day of just um, you know answering questions that have come in, answering you know, emails that I've already had back and forth and things like that. And um and speaking to the developers in the states to get to the bottom of some of those problems sometimes. Um, and then of course I've got a few other things to do in terms of you know, developments and things as well that I'm not going out of. So yeah, I'm always, uh, I'm always kept busy. Okay, and, and just speaking of the other things that you do, because I suppose people looking at the site and saying <coughs> website and some of our other, of our other systems, you've been, you've been a key part of lots of that stuff. What have you developed and what, what might people be using that has been part of what you've done? Sure. So, I mean, I didn't um, develop our main website. That was um, designed by um, the organisation, but um, I, I do sort of some upkeep on the site to add new products and things like that. Um, and I do um, some development work for internal systems that um, the staff, in use, uh, staff use internally to, um, to work with um, customer records and things like that so, sometimes, with, uh, particularly with the DSA side of the business rather than the um, uh, sort of VI market. Um, but, um, but yeah, there's a few things that we um, use internally and um, a few things on the website that um, you might uh, recognize as well. 
what's that experience like when you are creating for maybe um, an accessibility, let's say, cohort? Do you have to put a, sort of um, extra checks in when you're testing your code to make sure it's all going to be okay with screen reading and magnification and other technology? Yeah, so the, the things that develop are mainly web-based, so they um, uh, just use you know, standard um, web technologies, and there is a um, uh, sort of a, a standard code of, of uh, what should what you need to do to make a website accessible, I follow. So I follow those web standards that um, that so you need to, to follow to uh, make um, a site work with um, JAWS, for example, or ZoomText. Um, so, yeah. And I suppose it's great to have those standards and the web as an environment has gotten so much more usable, hasn't it, over the last number of years? I mean, yes, yeah, there's been quite a few new standards come out over the years that have made life a lot easier um, to, to get around web um, websites quickly, particularly um, sort of the type of um, dynamic websites you see nowadays where lots of things change on the screen and things like that. And um, there's a lot of things in new versions of JAWS and new web standards to make that a lot easier to navigate rather than just having to, to go through it as a, a static page, so to speak. So you've been in Sight and Sound since 2005. It's a long time, Will. What should you do before that? Well, uh, that's the thing. I um, joined actually when I was 18 um, out of, well, you know, I did a few jobs in between here and there, but um, you know, Sight and Sound is my main thing, really. I haven't Fantastic. Really... Yeah. Fantastic. And, it, and it, it is really nice when you meet colleagues who've been around here for a long time. It shows that people are very happy in the business as well, which is really yeah. nice. Um, so what do you do outside of work when you're not sitting in front of the computer or coding? What do you what do you like to do? Well, I have a four year old child, so a lot of the time which is taken up by looking after him, really. So, sure. yeah, <laughs> they can be quite a handful. So you're kept busy. Absolutely. Yes. Especially with the lockdown and everything, there's always uh, something to uh, to handle. Yeah. <laughs> and have you a favorite piece of tech or is there something that you're never without? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say so, Maybe something quite standard and boring and just say my mobile phone, I suppose, is the, the main thing that I, I tend to stick with. Um, you know, my Android smartphone, I don't tend to use, at least carry around a, a massive amount of technology, just yeah. basically, really, you know, mobile phone and uh, laptop and things like that. So, yeah. I, think, I think most people would say they're mobile phones. So I don't think it's boring yeah. at all. And you've answered my other question, which is going to be, are you an Android or iOS guy? So you're on the dark side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, Will, Android, finally, yay. Uh, yeah, Sharon, Sharon's <laughs> delighted. Carl and myself are not. Um, finally, maybe, Will, there's, there are lots of people, obviously, who are calling up for tech support. Tech support team in Sight and Sound is an extremely important part of what we do. But I think when people call sometimes, maybe they're stressed, they need answers quickly, they're under pressure. What can people do maybe when they ring up to make sure that they have a good experience and maybe to give you as much information as possible so that they can get that 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 whatever they need as quickly as they can from you yeah I mean generally we find that customers are very helpful and generally have a lot of information to hand anyway um, as long as they have you know their the computer handy so we can you know connect in if we need to and things like that and uh, maybe the serial number for the products if we need them then yeah I mean, it's, uh, it's all good really and of course, the great thing now with the tech support system is that we have the support tickets and it's very easy for people if they if they need to send maybe an email that you can kind of pick pick that up. Isn't that right? Um, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. So at the moment we um, run sort of a triage system, really. So when you call um, the tech support system, tech support line, uh, we'll um, answer the call and um, take as much information as we can. If we can get to the bottom of the issue within that call, then great. Otherwise, it will be escalated to um, on the tech support and uh, we'll uh, then get back to you as soon as we can regarding that. We tend to find it's just better that way to uh, to get through the number of people that try and phone in rather than you know letting people hang on the line for ages. We, we can just get through the, the calls that are coming in. So yeah, it's, it's quite handy in that sort of regard really. So we can make sure we um, do get in touch with as many people as possible. 
Okay, well, thanks so much for answering those few questions. I think it's really interesting people just know a little bit about who we're meeting today. Uh, great, to, great of you to join us again. And uh, we have asked Will to stay with us this <coughs> afternoon and help us answer your questions in our tech surgery. Uh, we always say at the start of these sessions that there will be some questions that might be very specific to your system and your setup, and we may need to take those offline, in which case we may ask you to contact our tech support team. So just so that people are aware of that before we start into the questions. I'm going to go over to Sharon because we got a couple of questions, Sharon, via email for Will, didn't we? We did, yes. Um, and just bear with me a minute. I like the way we were talking about triage in a tech surgery. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we have a good question here. Great question from Mike Lambert. Um, he says uh, he has a PC which is approaching the end of its useful life. And he'd like to know what help and support he could receive when he replaces his machine, um, which another one which we'll probably get from Sight and Sound. <laughs> Will he be able to keep his documents, favorites, and folders of old emails, etc.? Sure. So, I mean, with, with computers purchased through us, we tend to help transfer data as much as we can. So, our workshop team who set up the systems generally um, can work with you to do what we can to, to transfer the data. Whether that means, you know, often we have the laptop sent to us to so we can copy the data on our side, or when you receive the computer, we can then connect into both PCs and using, say, a USB stick or hard drive, whatever you have, we can then transfer the data over and pop it onto your uh, the new system and set up your email, whatever you need to, to be set up from there. So, yes, yeah, we do try and help as much as we can with that. Yeah, and you, you'd probably re be really used to that procedure as well, you know, so that you you just go through like a list of stuff to transfer it and make sure everything has, has come over to the new machine then. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So yeah, our workshop team um, do sort of uh, work through um, uh, sort of a list of, of everything to transfer over, including emails and things like that. And um, then they're all the best ways to um, to get everything over because obviously it's not not always that easy to get things like emails transferred sometimes so that they um, they, they know sort of all the ways that to uh, to do that yeah great that's very reassuring isn't it <laughs> um okay we have a question um on something completely different from um tolga karatas mm -hmm. regular regular webinar wednesday attendee hi tolga um Yep, uh, he has a Tiger software suite from ViewPlus Technologies and it's not producing the braille dots as expected. How can he resolve this, please? Sure, so I think I actually left a message for Togo earlier and um, sent him a, um, an email. I think he did actually um, send me a, a reply with a voicemail in the end, um, but um, I haven't had a chance to get back to him just uh, yet. Um, but um, the, there might be a way to increase the um, the dot um, height Intense. essentially yeah. in yeah, yeah. the settings. Um, so I've sent him information to, to do that. Um, so you, you, can, you can change it between like low dots, high dots and medium dots. So changing, turning that up might, uh, might help alleviate that. Um, it might be an issue with the particular embosser that he's got as well. So if that doesn't help, then we need to you know, speak with Toga uh, more in depth to, uh, to get to the bottom of that issue, I think there. Okay. Great. Is that like the you can adjust the the intensity of the the braille kind of thing? Um, that, that's right. Yeah. So the um, the sort of the braille proudness, if you like, really. So the, the how yeah. high the dots are. You can just change that between three settings on in the uh, Tiger Driver settings. Excellent. Um, okay. Uh, something else completely different. Uh, this is from Nigel. He has a kind of couple of related questions. First of all, his um, when he's on Zoom or other conferencing software, he finds that his voice is too uh, quiet mm -hmm. and he's tried increasing the output of the microphone and adjusting, uh, going into the sound applications in Windows 10. Um, he's tried different cameras with microphones and headsets and he's, so it he's, he's, looks like he's tried lots of different um, devices and he's set the output for both the microphone and speakers at 100%. Um, any suggestions? So with that type of issue 
Um, it, I wonder whether it's only happening when, when JAWS is running there. You know, if it's um, your JAWS that's causing it, for example, then that'd be one thing. But if it's just a general sort of sound issue, then it might be you know, something completely different. I have found that the setting in JAWS for listening for wake words. So in the in the new version of JAWS, Windows 21, there's a feature for um, voice assistant, which lets you talk to JAWS. And by default, that will always listen for when you say, hey, Sharky, or whatever it might be. Um, and of course, that uses your microphone. So turning that feature off can help with the microphone sometimes, certain microphone issues. Um, if it's not happening when, when JAWS is, um, well, if it is happening even when JAWS is turned off, so if you're using a different screen reader as well and JAWS is still you know, causing problems on the mic, then say it, it, it's really difficult to tell exactly what it would be, especially if you've already turned up the, the mic volume and things like that. Sometimes there's also a tick box for um, the um, um, microphone boost, which uh, can help. Um, but um, otherwise, it's uh, it might be something in the... Uh, uh, some laptops have sort of sound settings specific to that laptop. Um, some um, uh, some laptops have um, like sound boost um, features um, that uh, can interfere sometimes with certain things. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, it, it could be all sorts of different things really. Um, so you know, if it is a um, an issue that's happening with with JAWS specifically, then you know, we're happy to. Look into that more if it is uh, if that um, it feature doesn't help. Sorry, the um, wait, listen for wake word feature doesn't help. Then we can look into it further from there. If it if it does tend to happen even without jaws, then it might be uh, more one for Microsoft. And um, you could always try the Microsoft Disability Answer Desk, and they're pretty helpful with that sort of thing. Particularly for general Windows issues, uh, they might might know more than us about you know Windows specific issues like that. And how would you contact them? Um, so they actually have a free phone number. Um, oh, right. Okay. UK, it's for memory, memory uh, serves you right. We're home with 026 um, And uh, that say, goes through to the Microsoft Disability Arts Desk, and they help with um, Windows issues, Office issues, things like that, when you are using them with um, uh, software like JAWS or Zoom Text. You know, so they, they help. Uh, uh, visually impaired or other disabled users um, with their Microsoft general issues. So they're quite good in that sort of way. It's free phone line, so it's, um, it's quite handy. Mm. Obviously, we will help with certainly if it's um, an issue specific to JAWS, when it's more general for Windows issues, um, Microsoft are more um, okay with that sort of issue. So they might know more about that. And there can be a lot of different factors as well. Like, yeah, so there's Windows, there's Windows updates, there's, uh, yeah. you know, um, there's the accessibility software, there's the devices um, as well. Yeah. Actually, Alex, Alex Givens is saying that he has a similar problem on, on Zoom at the okay. moment. So um, he has his hand up at the moment, actually. I don't know. Yeah, we won't go to hands just yet. We've just Not finished just the emails. Okay, we'll run through the yeah. yeah. Um just the second part of Nigel's question then. Um when using conference calls, JAWS can be heard over the top and often drowns out other in instructions. Tried reducing the voice output of JAWS, which helps in part, but um can also it can hear the, the microphone so it picks it up as well. Um any ideas on that at all? So um, JAWS is um, sort of speaking over the, uh, JAW, the, the Zoom webinar essentially. Um, mm. hmm. I, I wonder what, you know, is, is JAWS reading out something specific? Is he trying to use JAWS at the, the same time as, as uh, a Zoom? If, if, um, if it's you know, JAWS is just saying something, even though you've pressed control and stopped it from talking, then it might be something that's, you know, a notification or something that's, that's popping up there. Um, but I mean, there's a few ways to get around that sort of issue. Obviously, it's the matter of balancing the volume so that they are um, sort of as uh, good as you can get them there. Um, uh, perhaps one way around would be to have JAWS coming out a different sound device to, to Zoom there. So for example, if you've got Zoom coming out of a uh, laptop um, speaker, 
you might want to get a, um, a USB microphone or sorry, USB headset, so say USB, um, get like a small USB sound card to plug in, you can plug in some earphones or something to listen to JAWS on. So then you haven't got the two sort of interfering there, particularly if you have JAWS you know, coming out of speakers as well as Zoom, I can see how that can get um, quite confusing, particularly if you've got the microphone for the, the laptop as well there. So, um, so yeah, and, and using another device and setting JAWS to use the other device might, might be a good way around perhaps. Um, so you can go do that by going to the utilities menu in JAWS and then going to sound cards. And that lets you set the sound card for JAWS to use. Um, and um, then you can just have JAWS coming out a different sound card. But of course, you would need to have a USB headset or something plugged in as well. And then you can set Windows to be the, the Zoom one, sorry, the Zoom to be the, um, the, the main uh, speakers and then can come out the other sound device that tends to help with that sort of issue really um a lot of them uh, people who use uh, jaws in like a call center environment for example might have jaws phone in one ear and the telephone call in the other ear so it's quite common for that sort of, sort of setup really in that sort of, sort of environment um, yeah it, it, it um managing several kind of inputs <laughs> It's, it's yeah, tricky. I think so, yeah. Um, got too much going on at the same time, then it, it can be quite cumbersome. So. No, that sounds like a, a really good solution there. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's... Should we have another question? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We have... Um, okay, we have a question about Zoom text. So this is John Morris sent in this question. He's um, been using Zoom text for about four years, mm -hmm. but the recent new version, version he's found has, is a little bit unstable. Um, although the developers have worked on a few of the, the issues with the new version, um, he's still getting uh, problems. And he just wondered how long does it take for developers to fix outstanding <coughs> issues um, would it be better off moving to something different like Fusion? And um, like, is, is anyone else having similar problems, basically? Sure. So I think of uh, both myself and James Butler have when spoken with John about the various issues he's encountered there. A lot of the issues it has are things that other people haven't reported to us, um, whether that's um, through, through chance or what, I, I, I'm not, not really sure. But um, yeah, there's a few issues that he's encountered that um, a lot of them we've been able to report to um, Freedom Scientific and they've you know, said they'll, they'll look into them for future um, uh, fixing and things. A few of them are to do with the, um, the limits to, to what uh, the Zoom text, uh, sort of read the functionality has compared to, um, Compared to, compared to Fusion, so it's like the Fusion is a lot more robust as a screen reader and has a lot more features. Um, so if he does tend to use the uh, speech functionality quite a lot, um, then um, uh, and he uses the keyboard a lot as well, so not just the, the speech, but also uses a lot of keyboard shortcuts and things like that. Jaws, uh, you know, Fusion, uh, the, the kind of includes both Jaws and Zoom text, um, really does help to, um, to make life easier. Um, and, and gives you a lot more information with the speech and a lot more control about what it does and doesn't say. Mm -hmm. Change a lot about that. Um, and um, give you a lot more keyboard shortcuts to, to manage as well. So if you're you know, trying to get around the system using the keyboard, using Zoom text, it, you know, you can get there, but it's, um, Jaws does really help you a lot more in terms of keyboard control. And of course, the speech feedback you get is a lot more as well. You get some things read out with, with Zoom text, but certainly not everything. I think, um, uh, with, um, uh, with with issues that reported to, to, to this bureau that I mentioned, they tend to prioritise them based on, um, I, guess, I guess, how many people have the same issue um, and um, the sort of complexity of the issues as, as well. Uh, we don't often see that side of things. So we see that it's being reported to this bureau and they, they give us often a um, preference number um, for the, uh, the bug. But um, we don't often see more than that in terms of their internal notes and um, what they think of the bug and um, when it's going to be fixed. Um, yeah, it, it really does depend. Like I reported a, a, a bug, for example, probably back in um, 
November and it was fixed in the February release. So it's often not too long, but it does depend on how many people have got that issue, the severity of the issue, things like that, really. Yeah. Um, with um, John in particular, I think he was, yeah, I, I think uh, a potential issue in his particular case as well was that uh, the, um, the, the version of Office that he was using was 2016, which is fine, you know, it's still supported by, by Zoom text, um, but um, the main version that they do um, concentrate on is the Office 365, because that all, that's all the time, they have to keep on top of that. And um, some things, you know, may might have to give, you know, so they, they try and test with Office 2016 as well, but potentially the fixes they make in Office 365 you know, may well affect something in older versions of Office as well. So that they just try to make sure that everything works with everything. And sometimes it doesn't go quite to plan when they try to update one, one end of Office and, you know, something, an older version, you know, might go wrong, for example. Um, but, you know, they, they do, you know, Look at all the issues and uh, fix what they can. So it's not as if they they completely cut you off, but it's just that they they try and concentrate on the new ones because that tends to be where a lot of people tend to be. Um, yeah, and basically with Office three six five because it's subscription subscription model, so people can just you know, pay monthly and always get the newest version. So they always have to keep up to date with that. Um, sometimes yeah. it's just a, a matter of you know that they, they don't try and break things, but um, sometimes <laughs> it does happen. So they. Um, do try, try, try and try go back and fix those when necessary there. It's the number of variables, isn't it? Again, you know, you've got Office 365 changing, you've got Windows changing, and then you, it, it's kind of like the spinning plates thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Almost <laughs> trying to keep everything working. Yeah, yeah. Even, on, even to do with applications on your system, like what's installed, you know, everyone's system is probably slightly different and how it's configured. So mm. there's, a lot to, there's a lot to... People might have customizations and yeah. things. Um, and also just on the Zoom text, I just wanted to reiterate about what you were saying about Zoom text and Fusion. Um, like Fusion has a kind of full screen reader in it. I, I always recommend that Zoom text really is suited for someone who uses a mouse, really. Um, yes, yeah. Designed definitely. that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's designed for someone who uses a mouse with the computer um, and uses the a magnification to to navigate around and things, but use it as speech for like a backup almost. A backup, so exactly. Yeah. Read things yeah. where they you know, need to, um, and you know, read long documents, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't recommend relying on Zoom text speech as a primary sort of way of interacting with the system because it just doesn't give you enough information to go on compared to JAWS. It's it, it useful to to read something when you can't see what's on the screen, for example, and you know, when the, the magnification doesn't quite give enough. Um, but yeah, just uh, jaws will be better in that regard. <clears throat> okay, um, thanks for that question, John. And okay, a question from Julie, Julie Napier. Um, a lot of different uh, services offer live chat how accessible is live chat so banks insurance and lots of different sites offer live chat what do we think of that one <laughs> so yeah, the the problem is with with um with a website you never know what you're going to get when you get onto a website really that accessibility some of them might be great some of them might be a bit of a pain to navigate around and um you know everyone's different so you never know quite how to navigate a site when you first encounter a new website you know you have to middle your way through using what keyboard shortcuts you, you've got in, in JAWS, etc. Um, when it comes to th things like live chat, they are um, they are often web interfaces as well. You get a you know, edit box and a uh, constantly refreshing stream of, of text on that same page. And it's the matter of making sure that JAWS reads out every time it, it changes whether you, you know, a message comes through. And if the developer has really taken accessibility into consideration, looking at the web standards mentioned earlier, for example, then great, it, it probably should work as long as they've really tested it out with a screen reader, for example. Um, but a lot of them may not because they just don't feed JAWS the right information and accessibility wise. So it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to know for sure um, without you actually going in and opening a live chat session and trying it out. It's really difficult to know for sure whether it's going to work. 
because you just don't know what you're going to get before you actually open it up. Um, so it's really difficult to sort of say for sure how you can navigate around those things and, and what to expect really, because it really does depend from, from instance to instance really. Um, so it depends what platform they may be running that on. It could be yeah, all different types. So how they've developed the, the, the live chat interface, what platform they're running on on their side determines how it's going, how well it's going to work for you. Um, so yeah, for, for um, and, you know, because it's a, a live session, it's not sort of thing you can, um, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult to say to um, to sort of work your way around and um, get used to the how it works as you're actually trying to do the you, know, you have to have the conversation. So I, I completely understand where you're coming from there, but it, it's difficult to really to get to grips with the um, how to navigate around it and have the conversation at the same time when you're in, actually in a live you know chat mm. session. So yeah, um, but it is just difficult, really. I, I, you know, there's no one size fits all solution for that sort of um, instance, really. So I think you know, mm. they seem quite handy live chats, but yeah, certainly they they are. Yeah, quite handy but... solutions. But... <laughs> To be yeah. honest, I find myself going around in circles a bit with one of them, so I end up ringing them anyway. <laughs> but, are, you, know, you start a live chat session and you end up speaking to a robot first of all, so you have to answer a few yeah. questions before you actually get through to a human being. And yeah, so you're never quite sure what's, what's going on really with them until you uh, start talking to someone else. So, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's the, bot, the bots, they call them, that. The, yeah, chat bots, yeah. That's... chat bots. Yeah, yeah. If so... you just type speak to human in there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not joking. If you put speak to human, it um, bypasses all their stupid questions, or it does on wow. a, a lot of different websites. Okay. Because then they know that you really can't be bothered and they're not going to answer your question from that <laughs> part. Yeah. Like saying, I have no patience. Yeah. <laughs> just speak to me <laughs> I mean, yeah some, that would be me <laughs> some of the issues with those uh chatbots is that they they try to i guess they 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 want to see if they can not have you getting through to anyone to answer your question quickly uh without having to put you through to a customer service person so mm. that they answer you ask you a million questions that never actually gets to the answer that yeah, you wanted yeah, you yeah. end up getting frustrated because you're it's it's sending you round on a merry on a roundabout that you're you can never actually get back so it's the same with the phone as well when you ring through. There used to be a way to get through them just by pressing star continuously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'd bounce you through to a human because you confuse the system. Yeah. It's a bit like driving around Regent's Park. So. Yeah, I have no patience. Yeah. <laughs> round right. and round. Are we How to get move out? <laughs> on to a couple of the hands. Yeah, let's go for some of the hands. Okay. So Alex Gibbons, it's all down to you. If you can unmute yourself, please. Alex, who was on our podcast last week, by the way. Oh, sorry, um, Alex. I just muted you then. I do apologise. The Doctor Who uh, Target World podcast. Hello. Um, Hi, there, Alex. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Um, do I go with all three questions I've got today, then? Yeah. The main, one I've got, the main one I've got is that I'm using YouTube on my phone, what people's live videos, like you just mentioned a minute ago. And on my phone, it will not allow me to type anything in the live chat box. On the laptop with George, it works beautifully. That's the first problem. Okay. So, uh, did you say it was with YouTube, did you say? Sorry. Yeah, on YouTube's live chat, Will, on, uh, with an iPhone and using voiceover, it will not allow you to type anything in the box. Um, is that just with the, the web browser in, on an iPhone? Uh, uh, on the iPhone through the YouTube app, basically, because I've got people do live sort of um, streaming stuff on YouTube. Oh, so I when see. They're... Yeah. So it's you yeah. go tap in the live box to comment on their stuff while they're talking and stuff, and it will not allow you to type anything. And I've tried loads of different things, and it just will not allow you to type. Where on the laptop with yours, it works beautifully. Right. So that's with the um, when you actually have you know, a stream, you have like a live chat feed next to yeah. the. Stream essentially. Yeah, the thing next to it, but you know, yeah. you've got the footage next to it and the live chat next to it, and you're trying to sort of comment on what they're doing basically, and it will just not do anything. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it depends on how they've created the app and whether they've adhered to Apple's um, uh, to accessibility. Um, Knowing Google and YouTube, I doubt it. That, so that's yeah. probably the reason for that one. Uh, the second one I think you've already mentioned is the fact I am with Voiceo having the same Zoom problems, and also with Teams. Basically, it makes it makes the voice really quiet. I'm having to whack it through an external speaker just to get to the right volumes, basically. 
that's um, on, on Zoom, is it? So with the iPhone, yeah, with Zoom, and team, with Zoom and team running, um, running it sort of at the moment. But um, voiceover running in the background, it is so quiet. You just have to put like the speaker on to nearly maximum to get both running okay, basically. Yeah, I think that um, it might have some sort of um, way of sort of, I think it might have some sort of uh, sort of balance to the, the speech. So as you've got the voiceover on, it tries to limit the sound of everything else coming out so you can hear the, uh, the voiceover, for example. Um, and I don't know whether there's a setting on voiceover um, for that. Um, you have to forgive me, I'm not really an iOS user. Stuart, I don't know whether... Yeah, I'm just thinking, Will, as you say, the voiceover ducking, uh, Alex, yeah. might be turned on on yours. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah that might be turned on. Look at so that. So I, um, I would maybe try turning that off or go into voiceover settings, or it might be on the rotor if you have it set up on the rotor. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean, Stuart. I'll have to look. I'll just hit with the final one. Um, what is the best? This might be Stuart, might be asked, this is a Mac question again. What is the best text reader for Mac if you don't want to sort of boot camp it to use Windows with um, Kurt's file? But that's oh, the problem I've got. I want to go with the Mac person. for everything. Um, so you you want to you use a Mac um, uh, and uh, you want the text reader? Do you mean like oh, the text is good as Kurt's file, but for the Mac, we're having to boot camp my Mac with Windows on it as well, basically. Oh, okay, like an OCR application to scan in. Um, yeah, yeah, like Kurt's file, like like Kurt's file. Basically, I want one on the Mac as good as Kurt's file. And the problem is that there's only Kurt's file three thousand for the Mac, isn't there? There isn't the one thousand isn't available for the Mac, and that's what I use at the moment on the PC laptop. But that's getting old so i want to eventually move over everything to the mac base because it's 100 times better so i just need a text reader will work fine with the mac basically as good as kurt's file hmm. i haven't come across an application for that for the mac myself um I know some of my colleagues were looking into um sort of software the mac i wonder whether there's anything they can they can offer so i can certainly have a word with my colleagues and uh, find out yeah. Yeah. Because, because the I will say this, um, there are stuff you can do on the, the Mac with Voice, so you just cannot do on Windows Jaws. I'm, I'm I just started putting stuff into YouTube for my podcast, and there's a piece of software which my mum allowed me to use with Voice over yesterday, and it worked beautifully on the, her MacBook. It took me three hours last night with Jaws, and it was just not playing balls because certain bits hadn't been labeled properly before Jaws. Gosh. Yeah, and that's called a headliner. It's a head thing called a software piece called Headliner, and uh, it's how you get podcast into youtube videos basically and it was just giving me headaches because it had bits we got to add the photo and add the text and all those boxes hadn't been labeled right i think so, it's particularly as apple sort of vet their applications more on their side maybe they have more stringent um criteria as to what, what can actually go on their app stores and things like that they probably require certain things to be labeled properly and things like that whereas windows of course it's a bit of a wild west in terms of software you can just download software from wherever they probably don't have that um but they don't you know the, the software can be you know through anywhere and uh, can have any level of sort of support for accessibility um so perhaps it's that, that just apple tends to have a more stringent criteria for what can go on their app stores so, um you know the, the software that you download tends to be i guess better high you know high quality perhaps yeah well, well, maybe it's just sort of a bit hit and miss. But some apps even don't work with voiceover, so it's all hit and miss still. It, it is getting a lot better though. I yeah. find. Thanks so much for your help today. Because like, that is sort of helped. We're still in sort of. Is it worth um, messaging Google's accessibility being for the YouTube stuff? I mean, if, if you've got a contact with like, Google's accessibility, then it might be worth doing that. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's them, they haven't got back to me yet, and it's been about two weeks. I, I, as I said, the, the walk around at the moment is using the laptop for Jaws, but it's not very, you know, comfy. I'm going to sit at a desk for a three-hour show, basically. So I'm trying to get a walk around that, basically. All right, Alex, thanks for your questions. Thank we you very much appreciate you getting in touch. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Alex. Um, right, let's move on to the next one. Andrew Summers, another regular. Regular regular attendee. Hello, how are you hey, doing? Andrew, good to see you back. Um, I've got a quickie with uh, the word, you know, called Sharky. Um, every so often, Sharky will kick in without me saying the word. Uh, I'm doing stuff on the PC and every so often, I'll get him saying that he wants to actually interact with me. Okay. Um, and I've had this before, and somebody said there was going to be a fix for it. 
I have actually had a similar thing, Andrew. I can absolutely verify this. Uh, I was on the phone the other day to talk to someone, and I think it's to do with the intonation of your voice or a word that you say that might be, because I certainly didn't say the word. I'm afraid to say it now in case I trigger it. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely I had the very same. Yeah, but it never came up. So, but the only way to get uh, to stop it at the moment is to actually disable the uh, saying or tell it not to in the settings. Yeah, disable listen for wake word, yeah. I mean, yeah. And I've got, an, I've got a workaround for Zoom for you, if you want to know, mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, volumes. Okay. The microphone. I, I use Zoom on a PC, and I've set everything to um, the um, sound card so that it, everything comes out the sound card um, because I've got a Bluetooth speaker and it sometimes wants to connect to that. So I've disabled, I've disabled it so that it then all comes through the, um, the sound card all at, at once. Okay, so that everything goes through the same the same device as it same thing. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Awesome work around for everybody if they want it. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks Thank for that. Thank you, Andrew. Right, next one. Tina Arbery. Tina, if you could um unmute yourself, please. I think we've had Hello, Tina, Tina on the show before. Hi, Tina. Regular, I think we've had you before. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Hi. Um, I bought um from Simon Sound last year a Capsi Smart Vision Two phone, mm -hmm. and I've had all my old messages from my other phone that I originally had put on this one, but I can't find them. I can't get to them, and I can't. I don't know how to do it, and I've listened to the instructions, but they're so difficult to understand because the gentleman's got a very strong American accent. I've got the instruction on a seat on a disc, and he keeps saying so many rows and so many columns, and he says row this and column that before he says the instructions. And because I've got fifty percent hearing loss and I have to wear two hearing aids, it's I'm finding it really difficult. Okay. Which um, instructions is it you got there? Is it on a CD? Um, oh, I don't know what they're called. No, you, the instructions that you've, you're listening to there, sorry, was that just on the... It's just on a disc. On, on, a, a, on a CD I have, disc. I had them sent to me. Okay. Yeah, it's I, for the phone. Yeah. I, I need to check. I thought my, my colleague Ash actually recorded a, a whole um, sort of quick setup um, guide um, audio, an audio guide um, for well, I've had somebody set it all up for me I can make calls of it but I can't that's about it I yeah. can't really do anything much else of it because I haven't really you know yeah. probably I haven't listened to them enough but I mean because it's so frustrating when he says column this and row that you know you don't really need to say that as though it's got it in print you don't really need to say that if you're given instructions you just read out the instructions yeah no, no I agree I, I'm not sure what um, type of instructions um, you have there really but I can check with um, my colleague and um, find out there because I thought we had some one that we actually especially recorded well, you sent it you sent them to me after I had the phone because it wasn't right. sent with it you see okay, okay well the, the issue that you're having though the um, um, uh, with uh, is it um, so importing uh, messages from your old phone uh, do you say those are already in, imported or did Yes, somebody's already put them all on here for me, a person who works with computers and phones okay. and stuff. But I, it's a sighted person, so I don't know how I've been put in here or anything, so I don't know what to do. They should just be in your messages, I would have thought, if they've imported. Yeah, but I can't find them. I don't know how to get to them. You would normally be able to go through the, from the main menu, go to applications and then down to messages. Yeah. Um, and... Um, I would have thought they should be just be in your, you know, in your message list straight from there. If they're not, then I'm not sure where they would have been put, to be honest, there. Um, so it, it might be worth checking with whoever did that to um, see where they, they uh, put them. They might have you know, put them into a particular folder, for example, 
or um, maybe if you give us a call, we can um, arrange to connect into the phone and have a good look at, um, at the apps and things on the phone. And um, Yeah, that if, might be a good idea because it might have been set up, you know, for a sighted person to be able to use it, but not for a blind person, if you know what I mean, because oh. it's the one that's got the, I don't know if you can see it, can you see it? You don't have your video on, Tina, there. It'll, Sorry, it'll, be, it'll be the smart Don't worry about, don't worry about don't it. Worry. Yeah, um, don't worry, yeah. It's only... the one with the, with the keyboard. You can either operate by voice with the keyboard or touch screen. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And yeah. I, I like to use the keyboard or the talk or the talk back on, you know, talks on or whatever it's called. Can yeah. I just ask, would maybe would, um you know, because it's, a, it's an Android, it's yeah. an Android... Um, device yeah. with the smart vision running on it is that right um yeah. so you'd have messages in the smart vision part and you'd have messaging in the android part maybe there's a bit of a mix up there ah oh, so, so they might be in the android part then i don't know i might be wrong sorry will <laughs> smart vision you can't actually maybe that's why i can't find them then so th there's no um separate message app um, okay what's on android um sorry the smart vision <laughs> Um, it's um, you can install sort of apps, third, you know, third party apps from the Play Store, but in terms of the apps that can built onto it, you only get the sort of apps that um, that uh, the Capsis, the manufacturers created. Um, and they're you know, nice, easy, clear apps to, to use normally. Well, um, maybe, so, maybe I could get one of you to contact me and then. Mm. Um, you yes, know, certainly, you know, yeah. Um, and then talk to me either on Zoom or some, or some would, sort of form or another so we can... Yeah, I mean, um, the Smart Vision 2 has a link... main mobile, you say? Okay, yeah, so you can just give us a call um, and yeah. uh, we, can, we can connect in and have a look. Um, because the um, Smart Vision has you know, built-in team viewer, essentially, so we can just connect in and, um, and check everything over from there, really. So... Yeah, it's probably best just to give us a call and we can connect in and have a look. At the same time, just ask us about the um, uh, the audio guide as well. I think my colleague Ash actually recorded a, a, a proper um, uh, sort of guide as well that's probably a lot easier to listen to than, than the one that you, sounds that you've got there. Um, so, um, yeah, we can send that to you as well. Yeah, yeah Ash, do... Ash doesn't have a strong no, uh, Ash American is very accent. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Tina, it's thanks for your question. Thingy bag, and you're not goofy bag. Just underneath the one with the bubble wrap on this chair on there, somewhere. Yeah, if you just give us a call, and we'll be able to help you out after the after the event, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry Thanks. about, but I just thought I'd ask you because no, that's not yeah, a problem. That's good. Thanks a million. I'll good have question. a look at grounding applications. I'll play around with it and see. Okay. What okay. okay. Brilliant. Just, just call, we can help. Cheers, Tina. Yeah. Thanks, Thank so you. Much. Bye, bye, Thanks. Bye. 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 Right. Um. Quickly on to Debbie Lawler, Mr. Lawler, sir. Oh, Mother Lawler. Hang on two seconds. I kind of just um. Where did Derry go? I hid him. Derry's <laughs> gone. Derry, oh, no, Derry. Yeah, yeah. Come Hello, in, Derry. Derry. My in, my in. Can you hear me? You're there. You're there. Great. So this is great uh, afternoon. Listen to the. But I want to answer. Alex was on looking for a text reader for the Mac. There oh, was yeah. um. I don't know if it's 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 an OCR thing. Is it called DocuScan Plus, and it works just as good as a uh, Kurtz file. And you can get it from system access used to do and they still do, but it's great on the Mac, I must say. No, Serotech, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah Serotech, yeah, but Serotech they're kind of now. It's called yeah. DocuScan Plus. And it allows you to buy a hover camera with it, or it works the Pearl as well. But my question just for the is I have a braille display and I'm just terrified of dots sticking on it. Is there a special way to give them an old clean? I obviously don't want to put it in the sink and fill the whole basin up, but is there a special way to clean the pins? Uh, as a matter of interest, is there any special way I should be cleaning the, those pins, making sure they're not greasy or anything like that from overuse? Sure. So, yeah, they, they can um, get um, a bit um, grubby after a number of years of using them because, you know, you, you do sort of yeah. use them day and day out with um, fingers so that, you know, can see how they, they can you know, collect some, some dirt over time. Now, the manufacturer of, of Braille displays is often sort of recommending the manuals and things like that. They recommend using a, um, a light cloth with some um, isopropyl alcohol spray, which is um, a particular type of sort of cleaning fluid you can get for electronics. You can get it yeah. from Amazon. I only had the word alcohol there. What's the cause? <laughs> <laughs> 
um, isopropyl <laughs> alcohol. So it's I um, still only had with alcohol. Say with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, isopropyl. Yeah, that's I must give that isopropyl, a bash. Yeah, isopropyl alcohol. So make sure you don't just um, dunk it in the. Uh, to normal alcohol, it's going to be awesome. I'll so, use the alcohol just before I use the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> just to say, uh, Sharon and I got Sharon bought a, ba a box of a box, sorry, last year of wipes, uh, that have a, I think it's the same alcohol they have in it them, it probably is. Yeah, green yeah. wipes, and they're, they're great for it. They're Ooh, specifically wow. for um, uh, spectacles if you like glasses yeah. uh, so clean glasses and i find them brilliant for screens and um and Excellent. braille displays <laughs> um, we got, we as long as they are electronic safe they've got to be you know make sure they, they, that they are definitely safe for electronics because if it's got any sort of fluid in there that's um that's not alcohol based it will stay mm -hmm. on the electronics and yeah yeah problems. so um i spoke alcohol is is you, know, you turn off the rail display first and then course, yeah. use it, uh, the isopropyl alcohol. Because it's alcohol based, it will um, um, evaporate. Yeah, yeah, evaporate quickly. Yeah. yeah. So it, will, um, it won't cause problems with some um, of the electronics in, inside there. Mm. Oh, that's brilliant. I have a problem with some alcohol here evaporating, uh, but uh, that's a different reason. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much, Ian. <laughs> thank thanks, you. Terry. Good Cheers. to talk to you. Cheers, thanks, Terry. Terry. Cheers. Thank you. Um, right, we've got Robert Powell. Robert's already here, so you should be just unmute yourself, Robert. There Hello. You Hello. Your... Hey, can you hear? You? Hi. Um, you've done about four things, and I've been going to comment and make a suggestion, and you've made okay. exactly the same suggestion just before I have. So, <laughs> well done, guys. Um, my question is about text reading. Um, I enjoy reading print. Um, only because there's a lot of stuff. I'm a big boxing fan and uh, a cricket fan and some of the old boxing books and cricket books and stuff, you know, Harold Larwood's autobiography, I'm never going to get on audio book or whatever. So uh, I, I want to read it in print. I've tried reading with a, a mobile phone, um, but I just can't get on with it. You have to hold your phone a certain distance away from the page and you have to make sure it's lined up and, you know, reading for pleasure rapidly becomes more onerous than your job. I just wonder whether in the rush for technology and mobile phones and, you know, Zoom and everything else, which I'm quite happy to keep abreast of, and I do, we've forgotten some of the simple things that technology initially gave us, like the ability to sit there in a chair and read a book in the same way as, you know, our sighted friends, colleagues, wives, whatever can do. And... I don't want something that's ultra complicated. I want something that I can sit in a chair, press a button, and hear it speaking to me. You know, a headphone socket would be useful, and possibly the ability to save so that you could keep your books for future reference. You didn't have to scan stuff twice. And the ability to obviously multi-scan. Um, any suggestions? I mean, yeah, there's always a way. There's um, various products available to um, make that easy. Um, you've got sort of the Pearl for a computer, which is a essentially a camera on a, on a stick, if you like, on a stand um, that you just put the book under um, and um, uh, turn the page and press a button on the computer and it will scan and read to you. There's a few of the um, sort of hardware products specifically for that as well that have a similar system in place. I think Freedom Scientific do one called the off reader nowadays um, that um, uh, has a similar system where it has a essentially a downward pointing camera and uh, we just press a button on the top with the book in front of it you just push the book up against it so you know it's nothing complicated there and um, press the, the button and it will read that page and then you just turn the page over and press the button again when you want to read another page um, so yeah there's, there's all sorts of products like that um, for various different configurations and and all you know, manner of things that uh, might help there. But yeah, there are quite a few different diff uh, OCR products available that uh, can do that sort of thing, whether it's on your mobile phone. And that, you know, mobile phone ones are really handy just to quickly read something if you've got a, a menu or something you're out and about and you want to quickly read something. But I agree, it's probably not the best thing just to sit down and read a whole book. It's real fast. Hold that whilst trying to turn the page and things and continually make sure you want the right height and things like that. So, yeah, um, there are different things available for different purposes, I guess, um, to hopefully make it easier. And then you have your wearables, I guess, then. The, yeah, I was like going to the... ask about the glasses, Sharon, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
could you read practically 100 pages of a book with the glasses? I haven't tried it with that many pages, but it definitely has a feature on the glass, the Envision glasses that where you can, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, Carl, but you can... Um, batch scan, is it? Is batch? batch scan, that's it, yeah. thanks, Stuart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, batch scan, so you can scan in more than one page and you can export it to the app as well. But I'm not sure what the limit is on that. I, I might, I'd have to look that up. <laughs> I mean, that's not too much of a problem because if you know it's 50 pages, you scan 50 pages and you export it, you know, then you just yeah. make sure you don't exceed the limit. But how practical are these glasses? I mean, I, I've actually had a family member offer to buy them for me, but I'm worried wow. about letting them spend their money. Um, I'm totally blind and I've never had any sight. So my issue is, you know, I don't really understand the concept of looking at something. Mm. Uh, anyone who sees me trying to do a FaceTime video call on a phone will understand all that. I don't know. I'm very good at showing people my top of my head or the ceiling. Robert, um, why, yes. why don't you let us arrange a free no obligation demo? We are out and about. We've been given the essential worker status. We all come fully PPE'd up. And hopefully you say you're in my area. <laughs> what area I wish are you I in, was Lawrence? Carl. I wish I was Carl, because you know a lot more about the bloke who does the demos down this way. But anyway, we won't go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No <laughs> comment. <say> that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm abstaining. Okay, well, look. Uh, you better mute me before I say anything more. <laughs> Robert, Robert, do you want to just give us a shed afterwards, maybe? Uh, drop an email to, to Carl or myself or the sales team and we'll see, can we sort something out? Yeah. Yeah, sure, of course we will. Yeah, okay. Great. Thanks very much. Cheers. No problem. Cheers. Excellent. Um, <laughs> right, let's have the next one. Um, another hand. Raj Shah. Raj, if you can unmute yourself. Yep. Hi, Raj. Hello. Raj. Hi, can you hear me? We yep. can. Hi, basically, I bought a smart vision handset from you some while ago. And uh, recently, I dropped the handset by mistake. And what I need is to replace the, the back lead and also have a spare battery. And how can I do that? Obviously, okay. is a, there is supposed to be a support on there, but I can't get through to the support. Oh, okay. I'm sorry you haven't been able to get through to us there. Um, what um, was the... Um, so did, did you mention that you needed to replace a particular thing there? Or did you mention uh, that? Well, you know the back lead. The, the lead is... Uh, like the um, cover? Yeah, the back cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the back cover should be easily replaceable. Um, we can um, uh, get one of those from the, the manufacturer, I think, you know, fairly easily. Yeah, but there is no direct access to them. I mean, I tried to do search for smart vision on the, on Google. and Oh, not... I see. Yeah. If you've been trying to get hold of CAPSIS directly, it's probably best to just to give, give us a call and we can get hold of the right part for you there. Um, CAPSIS are based in France. I'm not sure whether they have like a, an English specific phone number or anything like that. So it's probably best just to give us a call. We can well, I did call you several times. I even sent an email at sales, but there were, even today, uh, before you started, I dropped an email to Stuart. Yeah, uh, I've just seen it, Raj. So I, I can email you back uh, with the contact details for tech support, if that helps. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, sure that, just, that would be much better, please. Yeah. Sure. If you just send that to you of myself or support, um, then Stuart, then uh, we can have a look at right, that. And, I'll send it on to you then, Will. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The other thing is, I mean, you know, one of my neighbor mentioned that, you know, like the Envision, uh, uh -huh. somebody has come up with a another, uh, you know, looking glass or something for 300 pounds or something. All right. Okay. Yeah. But obviously he doesn't have any information. So I thought, you know, how, you know, if you can find out, give it to me. Mm -hmm. Then I can inquire because three thousand, you know, bucks is a big amount for somebody who hasn't got any source of income. Do you know what that was called at all? Sorry. Do you know what products it was? It was called at all there. 
No, there's no mention. He, he was, you know, reading an article about it. I mean, I, I saw the end vision, but I think the end vision is too expensive with the glass. Uh, and I don't know whether it would be any good using it with my smartphone. Um, I'm, I haven't heard of that specific um, no. one, to be honest, so I can't really say you know, how it compares in terms of what features it has and things like that. Um, if you hear it about it, Raj, maybe give us a shout again, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you happen to hear the name or if your friend finds out the yeah. name. Well, I'll it. ask him to, you know, see if we can come across the article again. Yeah, get yeah, back in that touch would be with great. Us. That would be good, yeah. so we know about yeah. it. We'd like to know. <laughs> 300 pounds is something you can afford from 3,000. Yeah, I see what you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you find out, then let us know, and we can certainly you know, look into that. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thanks Thank for your question. Thank you, Raj. Thanks, Thanks Raj. Thank you. Um, right, let's just move on quickly. John Morris, it's all yours. If you can unmute yourself, John. Hi, oh, yeah. Hi there, John. Yeah, uh, just further from the uh, the email question that that's, um, you answered earlier, uh, I, I got the impression you were saying that Zoom text isn't actually the tool that I that I need. I've been using it for four years, um, and it, it it's slowly getting worse and worse. But from what you said, it actually isn't for what I wanted. It's really magnified with a bit of a screen reader, sort of on on the side, whereas. For what I need, you're suggesting, I think, I should be moving to Fusion. Well, I think if you do, you know, really rely on the speech a lot and you um, use a lot of keyboard shortcuts rather than, you know, using the, um, the mouse mainly like that Sharon mentioned, then Fusion might be better for you, yeah. Um, you can certainly give a, a, a try for, a try of uh, Fusion and, and JAWS. I can send you a 90 day you know, trial just to see how you get on with it, certainly to start with. And, well, um, I, well, I had a trial of it um last year and okay. it was and it was great um but it didn't at that time it didn't give me much more than i was getting from zoom text it's it's pretty much the last 12 months zoom text seems to be falling apart and they don't yeah. seem to be supporting it and it looks like they're trying to basically push you towards fusion um so <laughs> if they're going to carry on doing that then perhaps i shall have to think about going to fusion but it's like four, four or five times the price yeah, I mean, it's not as if we were trying to push people onto Fusion in particular. It's just, you know, making sure everyone has the right tool for what they need, really. No, it's, it's just that so Zoom text just seems to be slowly falling apart. Yeah. I know I know you have had a, a few issues there. With just the a bit, yes, it's driving me around the twist. Yeah, there. I can imagine, yeah. It's, um, you know, we've had, you know, a, a few sort of back and forth regarding the, the issues you've had there. And I've so, spoken to um, Vispiro quite a few times regarding those issues. And hopefully they'll, they'll come up with something to... Yeah, uh, well, I mean, he seems to be suggesting that one, they're going to, they don't bother that much about Office 2016, which I suppose I can understand as it's it's now four years old. Um, but I say you did also suggest that Zoom text, the way it's designed, isn't really the, the tool any, that I need anyway. It's more a magnifier with a bit of a screen reader sort of tied onto the side, which wasn't what I bought it for or, or, or I understood when I bought it. Mm. So yeah, I mean, Zoom text is um, a, a magnifier and, and, and reader that they call it. So it, it is a mainly a magnifier application with all its bells and whistles and things, but also has the speech as a um, sort of a, a backup to actually using the magnification. You've got some extra speech there to, to guide you to, to use the system. Um, but if you are finding yourself relying more and more and more on the speech, then Sure, fusion might be um, better for you there. But well, as I say, I don't think I'm relying on it more than I did four years ago. It's just the mm. product was far better four years ago. Mm. Yeah, you know, so well, it's falling apart slowly. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to hear that you've had you know so many problems there. I know that you've, you know, I, I'm not sure whether it's you know necessarily completely falling apart. As we, you know, a lot of the issues you've you've had, um, we haven't sort of seen elsewhere. Not to say that the issues aren't happening, but it's just a. a I don't know, really. The, it, it, the, uh, the other you know, other users that are using the software aren't you know, running into these specific issues. Maybe they're just not using the same features that, as you are. Not not entirely sure there. But um, no, I mean, I don't think that Zoom uh, Vispero are completely casting Zoom text aside or not supporting it. I, I just think you know whatever issues they're having, they need to sort out clearly, um, and hopefully they will. Um, 
Well, perhaps I need to think about fusion then. It, it's worth having a look at to see whether it, it, it does work for you there. But if you, you know, you know, it, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of the issues you're having now with um, with uh, with Zoom text. Um, as I say, we just need to make sure they um they fix some of these issues that we've uh, reported there. Yeah, but it's, it's just taking so long. I'm, I'm just, you know, <clears throat> it's been more than a year now for some of them, eighteen months. Um, so. Well, we with the new version, though, Will, just to say, you know, there's always teething issues with a new, like the new version of Zoom text. But you said that they recently did a load of fixes in. Yeah, I mean, they, um, since 2021 was released, they've released about two or three patch updates now to fix various problems. So they are, you know, fixing issues and things like they release a, a sort of a patch for Zoom text and JAWS about every month or so. Well, I mean, I, I, I've still got problems from that started in it on the 2020 version um, right i think um yeah i think you did mention that you had some of these issues sort of originally um with um 2020 um and um hoping that it would be resolved for 2021 but uh but weren't no i say it seems to have got worse in 2021 to be honest and each up each time you get an update more problems occur so it's almost as if they're not probably bug testing the, these products before they send them out um, I mean, I know they do bug test them, um, and uh, they have you know, various testers in, in house to do that, and they have a, a beta test sort of scheme as well on their events. But um, all right, I um, yeah, I, I'd say I, I can't really um, say for. Perhaps I'll get in touch then and try fusion again. See what try fusion. Yeah, I mean, I'm really sorry for the, the problems you've had. I know that you, you know, we've had you know a bit of conversation about this already, and um, we've yeah, had the, these issues for a little while now, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry for that, and uh, yeah, we, we, will, we will try and get to the bottom of them, but yeah. Um, okay. And if you try Fusion 21, that might have even improved again since the one since the Fusion you tried last year, John. So maybe it's worth getting another activate uh, trial code for 20 for 2021. Yeah, give it a go and see, see if whether that does help. Yeah. But I know yeah. what you mean if you, if Zoom Text, the actual features in Zoom Text are enough for you. But well, uh, it's just that I mean, it's just silly things like. It just stops reading sometimes and starts again and then mm. reads a, a character that you deleted, then doesn't read the character you delete. And it just, it just, everything yeah. is just random problems. So it just, it's bugs. It just sounds like bugs to me. Yeah. You know, I'll, as, as I mentioned to you um, in, in emails and things, I'll, I'll sort of need to better test Office 2016 myself with um, Zoom text and try and reproduce some of the issues you're having mm. um, and um, see whether I can then get in touch with the developers about you know them further um as i say that i know they are fixing issues with zoom text in 20 uh, 2016 um but sometimes it's a bit of a balancing act of trying to get the newest ones working as well yeah let me know to up upgrade so, to office 365 then yeah i mean you get in touch with us anyway john we can arrange right. the, the yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, take your time well, well, john, thank thanks, you. To you. To you. thanks Emil. take right, care quickly on to james bazoni we're going to take these last few and then i'm um, it's getting close to calling orders Last to ring the bell. <laughs> right, um, James, if you'd like to unmute yourself, sir. Another another regular where we're on Wednesday. Mr. Bazzoni. Hello. Hello. Hello, James. Hi there. Okay, we're going now. We good. Okay. Yep. I have a bail issue. Um, it's a Bible and it has diacritics in it. So that you get soul. On, on, etc. And every time it hits one of these diacritics, Shaw says space marker, <laughs> which makes very interesting reading. Um, I know you can change a braille symbol if it's one um, dot, as it were, so one dot to be one cell, but this um, occupies two cells. It comes through as dot four to H. And um, I don't know whether that can be changed in any way. I could change a word. I could change Solomon so that it changes to Solomon. And every time it hits some other word where the diacritics occur, well, of course, you get the space marker. So when I read the Bible, it keeps on saying space marker. <laughs> OK. Now, uh, is that with, with Braille specifically, or do you use the speech? Or This is what I'm using the speech to read. So it's, it's this, the diacritics are within. It, it, it happens in, um, in the word processor. So when it hits this diacritic, it says space marker. Um, now, I know that you can add symbols to JAWS. Uh, there's a way to do that, a way to think of the text file that contains all of the symbols. You can add like, descriptions for those 
special symbols there. So um, we probably need to, need to go in and add some more um, or those specific symbols that you're getting there, the diagrammatic symbols, and um, George should then read them out. I think there might be something similar for the braille as well. I'd need to find out, but um, certainly for the speech, we can add the extra symbols in for George to read. It's a symbols issue, is it? Not a, not, you're not a, um, um, you, know, you don't change the braille, you change, you change the symbol. Okay, all right, well, we'll look at that. That's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for your help. Yeah, so if you um, you can always give us a call and we can maybe arrange the time to connect in and help with that, or I could send you a file to put into uh, yeah, your yeah. to yeah. connect because um, the poor old um, um, the phone company won't let me use Zoom. Won't let me use um, um, a team viewer. Oh, okay. One one other thing I was going to ask you, James, um, in relation to the Braille is what Braille code are you using? Do you know? Are you a UK or UEB? UEB, yeah. UEB, okay, so it should be, yeah, it should be okay on UEB, I, I would have thought. Well, the power comes out all right, but it's, I suppose it's the it's a, a same issue. It, it's the speech, when you read it, it says, it says uh, space marker. And if I turn Braille into uh, speech mode, it actually spells in the S-B-A-C-E. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost as though there's a formatting marker on the screen and you're getting a UEB representation for it. I think that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a symbols issue. If it is, is it saying as well as space marker? Is it saying paragraph marker and things like that as well? No, no, just say space marker. Yeah. I mean, in Word, there is an option to enable space marks and things. But I, I think if that was turned on, it would say space marker. But it say everything, yeah. Yeah. No, that's not turned on, otherwise you. Well, it says it says um, it says bullets when bullets are over, when, when around. It says bullets, and the braille office then says frond. I'm not quite sure what frond means, but that's another issue. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a symbols issue. Okay, we'll try. We'll try the symbols. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for your question, James. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, right, that's James. Gone. Andrew Summers again. Quick one, Andrew. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, and this is only a quick one. Um, Microsoft Word uh, 2016. Um, um, yeah. Uh, 365, actually, I've got. Spell checking options, right? A quick mm -hmm. one. When I was spell checked and got them all right, you know the pain on the right-hand side is still there. Uh, and I tabbed the F6. The only way to get rid of it is to tab to um, go the F6 key, get to it, and do a con uh, control spacebar and come down to close. Yeah. Yeah. It would, it, it would be good if they could bring out an update with JAWS that when it sees the spell checker, like in Outlook, uh, spell check it, say it's okay, bang. Gone. Or but even escape, is. like. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of those rely on the keyboard shortcuts built into Office. Yeah. Um, if um, Office doesn't have those keyboard shortcuts, then JAWS wouldn't, for that sort of thing, probably wouldn't put in its own keyboard shortcut. But you've got the similar um, things in, in Outlook or, and that. So it used to be good spell checker in Word. Now it's gone backwards. It's gone yeah. down the way. They've changed the interface for the spell checker in Word a few times over the yeah. years. Over, re over recent versions of Office 365 and Office 2016 and things, they've changed the interface for a few yeah. times, actually. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, it well, has um, made it a little bit more difficult in terms of access. I've got 365, yeah. and the mm -hmm. version of Word is, is, 20, is 2016, because I've yeah. gone to the uh, mobile. Okay. That, they'd say that should be fine. That's to say that they've gone through a few iterations, so I'm not quite sure exactly which which one it is there. But um, in Office, in, sorry, in Outlook, they they've got the old style of um, spell check as you mentioned there. But um, in, in yeah. Word, it's a sort of this side panel, which um, is a bit different, and the keyboard yeah. talk is different to what they were before. Is there a way you can feed it back to them and get them to uh, make it look like the Outlook option? Or Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, up to Microsoft, really, and it's not something yeah. that 
I don't think yeah. it's possible to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean, though, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean because um, I stopped using Control F yeah. for Find. You know, Control F opens yeah. another yeah. panel, yeah. so I use Control H for. I was going to say Control H is much better because yeah, you get the old yeah. Find with the search and replace thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but well, then I'm you know it's, it's spell check on the word and that's it, and it's just coming up. Plane's coming up. You do it, and it doesn't go away. The plane doesn't go. You just you've got. It's, it's a pain, of, isn't it? Sort of like <laughs> so, Actually, Andrew, that's one for the um, the Microsoft. Um, yeah, disability answer desk. Uh, desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you flag that with them. Yeah, well, it's lovely to talk to you, Will. You've helped me a lot in the past. Thank you. I think so, yeah. Thanks a lot. Right, no Thanks, Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Take care. Right, Raj, I do apologise, but I'm going to move on to Donald because we are aware of the time and we are running out. Um, so, Donald, if you could um, unmute yourself, please. Donald Wilson. I'm still muted there, Donald. Hi, Donald. Right, I'll just quickly move on to Raj. I'm sorry, Donald. Um, time is of the essence and we need to... Um... It's nearly last orders. <laughs> it is. In the meantime, while we're waiting these for these... Oh, just... oh there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we've got you, Raj. Raj. If you can okay. make it very quick um, for us, Raj, please. Really, really fast, really quick. Uh, the thing is, you know, I was very useful using window eyes and the, you know, the numeric keypad for mouse, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any other screen reader? I mean, I tried JAWS, but I can't use JAWS as, you know, I've got the home version of JAWS, but I can't use that JAWS just like, you know, I was able to use the, and the thing is that, the window eye is no longer wrong uh, in window in my uh, Microsoft Windows 10. Window eye is no longer will run as a protected mode, so I can't really take the risk of running a window eyes in an unprotected mode. Okay, so do you mean the? Um, I think there was a feature in window eyes to move the mouse around the screen using the number pad. Was that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's that feature built in. Well, there's certainly not that feature built into JAWS. I don't think there's um, the closest thing in JAWS is probably the JAWS cursor, which lets you sort of navigate. Well, I tried the JAWS cursor, but the JAWS cursor doesn't be like, behave like that. Yeah. The JAWS I mean, is, there an, is there an external, you know, like there used to be the trackpad or something, like, you know, like a little, a little square with a, you know, thing which you would move around in a square. There is there is the um, the mouse echo feature in JAWS. So if you had a physical mouse, I, I don't really know how useful it is because I've never used it. But in theory, yeah. you could move the mouse around the screen and hear what's underneath it. In, in theory, you could use um, in Windows there's a feature called mouse keys, which lets you use um, the number of pads keys to move the mouse around the screen. And in theory, like Stuart said, you can use the uh, mouse echo feature in JAWS to, to read out what's under the cursor. So might be possible to do that, yeah. Okay, how do I, if I if I can set that up in JAWS, how would I go about doing it? So the mouse echo feature is in the setting center. So you want to um, go to the utilities menu, Alt and U, and then down to setting center. Right. Setting center gives you an edit box that you can just type in a search. So you want to search for mouse or mouse echo. Right. Um, and then arrow down to the result, you probably get a enable mouse echo chat box. So you just press space on that to uh, enable it. Um, and then just press enter twice to sort of save and close it. So once that mouse echo is enabled, um, you, um, uh, I, I say you can use the kind of physical mouse to move around the screen to, to, to read out what's under the mouse, or you can, um, as, as I mentioned there, uh, in the ease of access center in, in Windows, there's a, a feature called mouse keys that you can enable to um, use the number pad to navigate around the screen with the mouse. Sorry, sorry. Uh, can I just come back to you? You say in Windows, I can uh, enable Windows, uh, the numeric keypad as a mouse keys. Uh, yeah, so in, in Windows, there's a feature called mouse keys, which uh, lets you use the um, number pad to move the mouse around the screen. Um, and what will I be able to use it with Joe's? 
Uh, I mean, it's separate to JAWS, so you should you know should still be able to use it. It's not something we normally suggest well, using. I mean, I tried the, 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 the narrator, but the narrator is not good. Uh, yeah, I, I think I mean the race doesn't doesn't have that feature in particularly, um, but um, the, the the mouse keys in the same ease of access area should help there. It's not something we'd normally suggest using with JAWS because you know, the vast majority of JAWS users. Um, don't tend to use the mouse to navigate around um, you know, the screen, but if you do want to do that, then it, it can be done. So it's it's possible, but I think you need right, to try I'll it play out. Around right. see, it's a bit I'll of try play around and see if I get any luck. Yeah. And just to let you know, that mouse echo, you can switch it on with a with a, a layered shortcut. Oh, okay. You can switch it on and off. So insert space bar followed by E and then O for on or off. Okay, we even yeah. by while while pressing the space bar. So you just you do ins e you just pre you press insert space bar and that takes you into layered shortcuts. Then you can okay, press fine. E and then O. Yeah, okay, E for echo you. and O for on. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Thanks. Um, sorry. <laughs> What happened then? <laughs> I don't know. I'd already pressed the cut off. I think he was just when, finishing off saying, just saying goodbye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. bye. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, we've just got a quick question from Aisha. She did ask if we're going to reply to her question. What do Stuart, Will and Carl and Sharon think will happen to standard technology and assistive technology? What are your thoughts and predictions for what will happen during the next decade and how far Ooh, will all technology go? Oh my God. I, I will tell you what will happen. Go we'll on, all Carl. have implants. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of what you say, your phone will be in, implanted into your arm. Everyone will have bionic vision. <laughs> and I'll be out of a job. <laughs> there you go. It, it might be true. It you'll might be, be true. Be on a beach somewhere, Carl, will you? Yeah. I, 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 Ever Lion you know, says AI everywhere. You know, it's an interesting. <laughs> I think exactly. AI, absolutely. And, but I also think, you know, wearable and smart technology is going to. For, in, in my view, anyway, it's going to come, become much more a part of our lives and integrated technology. And in some respects, I think it's going to become harder for us to get away from it. And, and that's not always a good thing either. No. It's, yeah, um, I, I agree with Stuart that there's going to be a lot more wearable technology and AI to go along with it to make things smarter and smarter and smarter and do things uh, for us a lot, I guess, um, and uh, and hopefully help the, the IP. Robot guide dogs. <laughs> It, it prompts me to think that we might, and it's a really interesting question, we might try to put together a session sometime and get a couple of people who are sort of thinking about the future, uh, future tech and stuff like that mm. and what's happening. Well, you, you think about how far Tesla have come with cars that drive themselves now already on the streets in America. Yeah. It's not going to be that long and you can get a mobility allowance. So there's no reason why. Would you need a guide dog? You can have a pair of glasses and you sat there with a car driving you everywhere you want to go. Just program it in and you're there. So what would happen when I come to Northampton? I don't get the train from Birmingham anymore. I just have to rent a car at the airport. Is that yeah, one? that's it. Go and rent uh, your own car, which would be quite scary, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think the issue might be, though, is you might still need someone to tell you where the car is. Yeah. But saying I, that, the Tesla, you can press a button on the car and it comes and parks right in front of you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I saw that the other day. It was immense. So the car probably comes to pick you up from the airport then. Exactly. You can, it'll tell you there's going to be a specific bay that it'll ping at and all of a sudden the car will be there. Yeah. It's not the same as the taxi driver complaining about Northampton traffic though, it's is it? Really? Not, <laughs> I know. Or the train. We've grown to like the train, Sharon, from Birmingham. To oh, the train's great. Back yeah. in the day we used to go to Northampton. Back in the day when we used to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If anyone can remember that. Um, okay, any other hands or queries before there we is John Doherty's put his hand John, up again? Okay. John's, oh, no, John Doherty's different one. John, sorry, I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry about that. I must have made a mistake there. No, hey, John. Uh, Hi, John. Uh, everything's been good so far. Um, oh, great. <laughs> I, I just I must have made a mistake there. Oh, ah, no problem. Sure, oh, it's nice to speak to you. Anyway. No, no, but, uh, no, no it's, it's good. I mean, well, it's, it's all been very good. Um, I don't know. I think I might have asked this before. Maybe I haven't, Stuart. I might have been doing this a long time ago. But uh, I purchased an Android. I didn't purchase it. I got it as a, I wouldn't say a gift, but I got it as, as I, I participated in a workshop. And uh, I got an Android 
Talbot is a like for participating. So one of the perk was that everybody um taking part in the workshop got an Android tablet. So uh I just wonder how to like because I'm fine but sometimes when I go into the that they set up a Gmail account for me, but uh it's trying to get around sometimes it's fixed. So when I'm going through the emails or I'm trying to get download stuff on it, it's very hard to get it right then, you know, that's very right, turn off the the talk back and all that on. So I'd be it's just like trying to get around it, I suppose. That's the big thing because the, the system is a bit different to the Apple devices, obviously. And I guess it depends, John, on there are so many variables in some respect, the version of Android and then whether it could be, yeah, well, whoever makes, makes your tablet have put any, any things on top of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, the, be all of that, yeah. The now, I, know, I, I, was, I know I was the only visually impaired person that, 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 uh, that, that, was, that actually got that received one of the, that was on, on the course itself. Mm -hmm. So that could have been it that when they were looking at it, they weren't, you know, that everybody else was able to use it. Well, those that can, they wouldn't have the same like issues as me. So I don't know if that was the case. I know I've been there have been a few people I've been working with from like there's a, a place in Northern Ireland. So the, the, the project that I was I was part of or still part of is a was a cross border project between the Republic of Ireland and, and Northern Ireland. So I was working with a few people there and I thought they would there was a few organizations in the Republic here as well, but I think. I was saying to them, they might be able to get in touch with someone and, you know, they might have contacts in England and that, or they might know people who use Android devices, like t people who are totally blind, who use Android devices, but I don't know if, if you know anyone who does, or if any of you know anyone who, who, who any blind people who use Android oh, devices. Loads. There are definitely lots of people. It's just, and there are email lists, I know. Um, John, maybe the best thing is, if you don't mind, just remind, send me an email to remind me. And I'll do I'll, that, yeah. I'll see, can I find, there's an Android. Yeah, they asked me what version I was using. In there. I, know. I know, I know I can tell you the tablet I got was a Lenovo M10. That's what I do know, but as regards to the version of, the version of Android, I, I don't I don't know what it is. I know nothing about Android, unfortunately. <coughs> I just, Lenovo I, 10? I defer to Sharon on those uh, things. Uh, it's a uh, Lenovo M10. Yeah. Ah, Lenovo. That's, that's the, that, a Lenovo Tab M10. That's what it calls it. So that that's the, the type of that uh, tablet it is. But uh, as regards to the version, I know Stuart, you sent me an email. Is that you, Emilia? You sent me in the back asking about the version, and I actually can't tell you that. But all I know is it's a Lenovo M10. Now, I do know there is to do with the Android devices because I've asked people who have Android phones, and they've been telling me that there's two different screens on them, and they work. They that is to do with like there's a Lenovo screen, like every model i think has its own id has its own screen and then there's like there's a google screen but i don't know if that's to do, if that improves the accessibility in any way or not hmm. i'm not sure I've, I've heard of that before to be honest so yeah if you just send us an email john just remind yeah, me to and i'll put you in touch with there's a couple of android lists i don't know how good they are but you could you could join them and see if you can get your questions answered yeah, um, yeah. but there is blind android users and a few oh, i can do that yeah. a few active worry, groups yeah. around so yeah, because I, I don't know, like, because I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody in the public of Ireland. I know, obviously, like, I know quite a few blind people, but who, who use mobile phones every day, but like, none of them, as far as you know, uh, use uh, use any Android devices. They're all they all have iPhones, as far as you know. Okay, <coughs> no problem. We'll 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 see what we can find out. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, John. Okay, okay thanks, thanks so much. Cheers. Um, Stuart. Yeah. Um, there's a suggestion on the chat about robot guide dogs for future tech. Sorry. <laughs> that's an interesting robot guide dogs, concept. Uh, oh, in fact, that bloke that's put that in there. <laughs> in fact, um, um, there's an announcement about guide dogs. Stuart, would I have time just to? Oh yes, of course. Yes. I completely yes. forgot at the beginning. Sharon. I'm sorry. Well. Yeah, we have announced but... from Irish guide dogs that we said we'd help promote. Um, Can I um, just be very yeah. rude and just say my goodbyes because I've got another meeting. Which is why I was kind of booming it through. Okay, Carl, sure. we always appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Cheers, Carl. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks. Okay. Right. So we've just quick announcement from Irish Guide Dogs. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sharon. Um, sorry, I just I I just lost it. Sorry. <laughs> Technology is wonderful. Um, just bear with me one moment. And while we're doing that, just to thank Will Burton mm -hmm. for your time. Will, Thanks, it's been Will. great having you. You might have left the door open for yourself to come back. That's the only yeah. thing. We're <laughs> always welcome back. We'd love you to bring you back again in the future. But thanks for joining us uh, on the session today and answering all our questions. 
Thanks, Will. Yeah, and just to say, um, it's just from Irish Guide Dogs, they have guide dog information sessions happening on Thursday, the 11th of March at 5 p.m. and Tuesday, the 16th of March at 2 p.m. They're online on Zoom. Um, so they're an opportunity for people to find out about how to apply for a guide dog in Ireland and hear the experiences of some people who already have guide dogs. So they're open to people interested in guide dogs and um, family and friends. So if you want to go along to that, um, you can email Anne Linehan, A Linehan, L I N E H A N at guidedogs.ie or ring 087-661-7333. Okay, and if anybody misses that info or needs it again, yep. drop us an email yep. to send to sales at sight and sound at UK. Just mark for the attention of Stuart or Carl, we'll get it to you. So thanks everybody. Thanks again to Will Burton. Thanks to Sharon, as always, and Carl. Uh, we're back again in two weeks time uh, with another webinar Wednesday session. If you're on the email list, keep it, keep in touch with us. And you'll, you'll hear from us before that with what's coming up in two weeks. But for now, take care and we'll talk to you all soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, bye. Will.